Hello, my name's Scott Davis. Welcome to New World Birth. This is the weekly neutrino forecast for April 13th to April 19th of 2014. Human design is a synthesis of four ancient wisdom systems as a bridge to understanding our potential to discover our path and making decisions that are correct for us as individuals. And those traditions are astrology, the I Ching, the Hindu Brahmin chakra system, and the Kabbalistic tree of life. So we're going to look at how these systems all work together. First of all, we look at the sun and the moon, the nodes, and uh, all the planets uh, in the wheel, much like we would in astrology. But instead of looking at them as they uh, relate to uh, zodiological constellations or to each other by the angles they make, we're going to look at them in relationship to these hexagrams of the I Ching, uh, which then are mapped to specific locations within the body graph. Um, and, um, and on April 13th, uh, we have the sun in Aries. We can see it right here. There's the sun. It's in the sign of Aries. It's in the 42nd hexagram, which is out here on the very edge here. And, and we, they're numbered from bottom to top. So this one goes yang, yin, 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 yang, yang. Um, and, uh, um, the, uh, shapes inside of the body graph are called centers and they represent the next stage of our e evolution as human beings from having the seven chakras that we've all probably learned about to now having nine centers, uh, coincidental with, uh, Herschel's discovery of the planet Uranus in 1781. The pathways between the centers are called channels, and they're from the Kabbalah. These black strips of paper on the chart uh, represent uh, gates that are being activated uh, by the sun, the planets, the nodes, regardless of whether they form a channel. I'm not following the moon in this demonstration. It moves very, very fast and activates three to four gates in a single day. And it would really have turned this presentation into um, a many hour affair. And as a 5 1 profile person myself, I, I, I just don't feel that that would be practical for, for what I can offer. Um, so we start out, we've got the sun in the 42nd hexagram, which is mapped to an opening in an energy channel called the gate. Uh, and we have the 42nd gate right here, uh, coming out of the, uh, the, the located on the sacral center. Um, and uh, the, the 42nd gate is the gate of growth. It's called increase. It's the expansion of, of resources which maximizes the development of full potential. Again, I said it's down here in the cycle center. Um, in, it's in an abstract collective energy path called the sensing circuit. In the channel of uh, maturation and design of balanced development, that connects with the uh, 53 down here in the root, uh, and it's the 53rd gate of beginnings development. And I found human design to be amazingly accurate for in describing uh, the person, and that's what I use my primary tool when I'm providing readings. Um, we have uh, the following gates uh, activated on April 13th. Uh, like I said, we have the sun in the 42. We have the Earth in the 32. The North Node is in the 50, and the South Node in the 3. Uh, Mercury and Uranus are both in the 21st hexagram. Uh, Venus and Neptune are both in the 37th hexagram, uh, which is interesting because if you know your astrology, those those both of those pairs are 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 planet octaves: Mercury and Uranus, and uh, Venus and Neptune. Uh, Mars is retrograde, and it's in the 57th hexagram. Um, Jupiter is over here in the 39th hexagram, and Pluto is here in, in, uh, in, in the 38th. Um, um, so obviously not every gated activation forms a channel, but this information uh, can be very helpful if you know your own human design chart, because some of these channels, channels uh, transits, will form channels with potentials in your personal body graph. And you can get your human design chart by going to jovianarchive.com and click on the button that says get your free rave chart and then just enter in your uh, your birth information. 
Um, we're going to be looking at the sun's line values daily because 70% of the neutrinos that we receive come through the sun. And as Ra Uruhu said in Design Perspectives number 56 in his presentation titled Living with the Program, because that's what we're going to be talking about, what's the program, uh, Living with the Program with Ra Uruhu, the lines of the day. When he talked about these daily uh, shifts of line values, he said, we can always take advantage of the themes of the day. This is just like knowing what the weather's going on outside. If it's raining, it's good to know that if it's going to rain later, you bring your umbrella. You know, if it's going to be sunny, you might want to put on some sunscreen. That's all we're doing with this is just looking at what's the energetic so that you can kind of use that just to, uh, to, to better plan your day. So let's get started. On April 13th, we start with the sun. Again, it's in the 42nd hexagram, but at the very beginning of the day, uh, uh, it's in the, in the, in the third line, uh, it, uh, in the line of the martyr. And, uh, it's keynoted as trial and error in times of, uh, of, uh, uh, increase. Mistakes are a natural part of progress. Uh, exalted, it's the energy and assertion to turn mistakes into advantages. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a little cold that's hanging on here. Um, the power to accept mistakes as a part of growth. Detrimented, it's uh, a moodiness that in error may succumb to brooding and unnecessary caution. Mistakes give power to moodiness and caution. So third line days, think about it, we're dealing with the energy of, of, of the martyr. So it's, it's, it's important to be careful on the roads, be careful with, of what's going on in your environment. <clears throat> you know, it's a day when people have bonds made and broken, <clears throat> a trial and error process that leads to discovery. Um, third line days, uh, you know, things might bump into you. It's a good material day. It's a good day to do business and work with the material plane. You just have to be careful that things can go wrong. But when those things go wrong, they're, they lead to discovery. So later on the 13th, the sun moves up into the fourth line, the opportunist line of the 42nd hexagram. And this occurs at 9.57 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And all the times I'm going to give you are going to be Eastern Daylight Time. So you're going to want to convert them to your local time zone. Um, so anyway, the, uh, the sun is in the 42nd gate fourth line it's described as the middleman exalted the quintessential manifestation of the mediator the maturity to bring growth through mediation detrimented it's where the gift to it's where the gift to establish and maintain relationships is ill suited in this position to act in mediation where harmony must take a back seat to pragmatism uh, a, a lack of uh, maturity uh, where the power to harmonize distorts mediation and limits growth. And these are coming out of the Ray V. Ching. Uh, so if you want to look at, look them up, that, that's where you'll find them. Um, fourth line days, you know, this is actually where we're looking at a shift because when we're in the first three lines, uh, these are personal process lines. Um, once we move up to the fourth, fifth, and sixth, we get into a transpersonal energy. And so when we get, we've moved into this fourth line energy, um, certain themes come up. Uh, you know, there, there, there's, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 we're moving our perspective for an inward perspective to more looking outward. <coughs> fourth line brings, uh, themes of friendship, of companionship, of networking. Fourth line days are great for social interactions. Might be a good day to schedule some kind of event. Uh, <clears throat> and people are more open to networking and being friendly and social. Okay. On the 14th, the sun moves into the fifth line, uh, in the line of the heretic. Again, we're still in the 42nd hexagram. The shift happens at 8.55 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The sun's exalted in the 42.5. It's described as self-actualization. Exalted, the fulfillment and actualization of pur purpose <clears throat> as a natural path uh, whose reward is uh, a healthy sense of self rather than the power and influence uh, that uh, naturally flow. 
um, growth that is self fulfillment and naturally uh, uh, and naturally leads to influence. Uh, now, so once we get into the fifth line day, you know, fifth line, the heretic. Uh, it's it's you know themes that we have uh, things of suspicion, uh, but it's also universalization. You know, where something can leak out and 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 uh, you know become very uh, <clears throat> grow very rapidly like a virus. You know, uh, um, you know, like a YouTube video that that gets a, a lot of views or a Facebook post that goes viral. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm, I apologize. Um, it's a great deal. There's a great deal of suspicion and paranoia on the fifth line day. Uh, as I've said before, it's only paranoia if they're not out to get you, and often if you're not meeting their expectation, they are out to get you. Um, so, the, 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 and that can really impact the nature of our relationships. Um, so, there's also projections and seductions are also. Uh, themes of fifth line days. On the uh, the fifteenth, the sun then moves into the sixth line, so up into the line of the role model. Uh, 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 again, we're in the forty second uh, hexagram, and uh, it, it, this occurs at seven fifty four a.m. Again, Eastern Daylight Time. The sun in the forty two six is nurturing, exalted, a natural and instinctive nurturing of others uh the the power uh to share the process of growth with others detrimented it's a restrictive and malefic materialism that is self-alienated and encourages aggression the refusal to share the benefits of growth with others so six line day think about it now we're on the roof of the hexagram it's actually usually looking beyond. It's looking at everything else that's going on in the neighborhood, not so much what's happening in in, on, 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 uh, in the the building it's sitting upon. Um, and so you know, this is when people's heads are up in the clouds and they they bump into things, they walk into things. Uh, you know, it, it it it's looking beyond. It's looking at the future. It's thinking about what comes next rather than what's happening right now so much. Um, might not be looking at things that are happening in the immediate environment. And like its harmony, the third line, it has certain dangers of like not seeing a car coming or not seeing a bill coming, things like that. And then also on the 15th, um, Mercury changes uh, gates. It, it moves out of the 21, uh, where it's uh, been uh, with uh, Uranus, and it moves uh, to, the, uh, to the 51 over here. And, uh, and uh, you know, Mercury's the messenger of the gods. This is about communication, expansion of human consciousness through communication. And it's not just as words, but also music and sound, you know. Uh, there's many, many different ways that we communicate. Uh, and uh, so what do you need to communicate in life? Well, we communicate the message of our design, Mercury, through the medium of our personality, Mercury. And what needs to be communicated in the 51? Shock. Uh, it's the gate of shock. It's the arousing. The ability to respond to disorder and shock through uh, recognition and adaptation. And Mercury in the uh, 51 1 is reference. Uh, the advantage of, of previous uh, cycle uh, crisis experience exalted. The gift of re examination that is the foundation of preparedness. Uh, the power of the ego conditioned by experience. Detrimented, it's a tendency to uh, emotional withdrawal after shock or the weakness of the ego in times of challenge. And then uh, at this point, the sun uh, moves out of the 42nd hexagram and uh, joins the south node here in, in the third hexagram and uh, th this is an axis with the sun earth axis and so the earth moves out of the 32nd hexagram and joins the north node in the in the 50th gate of uh, values the ca a cauldron uh, this shift happens at 654 a.m. again eastern uh, daylight time the sun in the third gate of its of ordering difficulty at the beginning 
the fundamental challenge of uh, initiation uh, is is to uh, transcend confusion and establish order. The sun in the three one is is synth uh, synthesis. Uh, uh, difficulties uh, can only be overcome when all pertinent factors have been analyzed. Exalted is the understanding that confusion is, is natural but must always exist before clarity can be achieved. The innate knowing that order will emerge from confusion. Uh, detrimented is the reliance on intellect uh, at the expense of intuition can lead to unnecessary frustration, the instability to know that order will emerge, and the drive to find this knowing elsewhere. So now we're, we've moved into a new hexagram, so we're in the first line. And like I was saying, the first three lines are about the personal process. <clears throat> These days are when people are looking inward, they can really be absorbed in their own process. The theme of the first line day is fear or anxiety, you know, and, and what it is, is it's fear that needs to be investigated. <clears throat> so it's a day to study, not necessarily to act, a day to look at, into things, not to jump and make something happen. It's a good day to deal with things you don't understand, can't make sense of, or don't know. Um, and then also on the 16th, uh, Venus moves uh, from the 37 here up into the uh, 63, uh, coming out of the head center here. Find a sticky one. Let's hope that will stay for the duration here. Uh, we'll just go with that. Um, anyway, uh, and, and, and Venus is very powerful, uh, and, and Rob talked about it being really deeply misunderstood. Uh, and it's very, very different. Venus in human design is very different than Venus in astrology. Uh, it, it, it brings morality. It's about natural law uh, in which we deal with the other and the consequences of the world around us. So, you know, what disturbs you on a moral level? You know, your your design and personality Venuses tell you the moral dilemma that you, you're going to work out in your life. Uh, and if you do not act with moral cl uh, clarity, Venus can be unkind in its retribution. Um, in the 63... Uh, the Venus is about uh, doubt. It's in the gate of after completion. Uh, it, it, in the spiral of life, all endings are beginnings. Uh, Venus in, in the 63-1 is composure, exalted. The quality of the uh, personality where achievement is accepted with uh, equanimity and where continued development is allowed to take its natural course. Uh, acceptance of achievement, uh, but doubt uh, uh, whether continued development will take place. Uh, detrimented, the tendency in, uh, in achievement to immediately seek new goals at the risk of destabilizing what has already been accomplished. The pressure in achievement to uh, still doubt one's capabilities and to immediately seek new goals. And then on the 17th, the sun moves into the second line. So it's moved from the line of the investigator up into the line of, of the, the hermit. Now again, we're still in the third hexagram. Uh, and this occurs at uh, 5.54 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, the sun in the three, uh, third gate, uh, second line, is described as immaturity. <clears throat> the unrestrained acceptance of guidance, exalted, uh, the unrelenting energy to grow uh, will eventually triumph. Uh, 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 unrelenting energy for growth will eventually triumph. The energy and potential for individual mutation, detrimented uh, internal instability, which both accepts and rejects authority simultaneously. Uh, energy and potential that is conditioned by others leading to uh, instability. And, you know, think about it. Second line day. Okay, now we're in the line of, 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 of the hermit, you know, who's waiting for the call. So people will be waiting for something. 
uh, you know, waiting to be called to do something, waiting to be noticed for their natural talents. Uh, and so people get really kind of stuck in what's going on in their own life, their own trip. Uh, so, you know, this is not a great day for some big social uh, gathering because basically people are, aren't going to really want to come. They'd much rather be homebodies just doing what they do at home. Um, and then on the 18th, uh, the sun moves into the third line. So now it's up into the line of the martyr uh, and, and of, the, of the third hexagram. This happens at 4.55 a.m. Uh, again, it, these are Eastern Daylight Time, which is uh, its survival. The ability to recognize and distinguish between fertile, uh, between fertile and sterile in their various manifestations. Exalted in reproduction, the ability to choose the best mate in, uh, in, 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 in an innate knowing of what is sterile and what is fertile in the mutation it is specifically uh, biological and develop, uh, dependent upon collaboration with others. Uh, detrimented, it's the perverse uh, denial of evolutionary standards and innate contrariness which refuses to mutate. Uh, you know, so third line days, again, you know, trial and error process, you know, being careful on the roads, watching out for swinging doors, swinging elbows. You might have a day where bonds are made and broken, maybe in the same day. Um, you know, again, trial and error process, things bump into you. Um, but ultimately, Whatever goes wrong is there to, so that we have some kind of a discovery during uh, during that energetic. Um, and at that point, this is when uh, Mercury moves from the 51 and the pursuit of the sun, and it moves down here into the 42. I want it sticky. My goodness. Um, anyway, again, we talked about Murphy being the messenger of the gods, you know, communication, uh, and, 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 uh, so in the 42nd, uh, the, what it's being communicated, we're communicating about growth. This is the gate of growth, increase, the expansion uh, of resources, which man, uh, maximizes the development of full potential. And Mercury in the 42 one, is diversification exalted it's the ability when sur uh, when surplus resources are available to extend one's activities beyond the normal scope uh growth through expansion particularly uh when there's a defined route of course we do not have a defined route here but if this uh connects up with uh if you happen to have the 53 in your in your chart uh then th this transit would give you that that we might define your route it would define your route if it wasn't already defined. Um, you know, uh, detriment it is a tendency when surplus resources are available uh, to uh, 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 to to uh, to uh, uh, centrifugal uh, application uh, uh, decadence. You know, basically where. Where you're, you've got all these resources and, 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 you, and you, you just waste some of them. You know, too much expansion that can lead to decadence. Um, also on the 18th, uh, uh, retrograde Mars, um, moves out of the 57. And, and Mars is moving backwards from the perspective of the Earth. So it, 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 it goes to the gate that, that precedes it in the wheel. So Mars backs into the 48, uh, the gate of depth, the well, the necessary and qualitative foundation that is a prerequisite to establishing, uh, to establish the common good. It's exalted in the fifth line and it's detrimented in the first line. And Mars is going to go through the whole thing in its uh, retrograde process. Um, Ross spoke about Mars being an extraordinary and immature energy resource. That lacks refinement. It's subject to outbursts. Mars represents war, the warrior archetype. It's about, uh, following our, so by following our strategy and authority, we can slowly refine our design and personality Mars from immaturity to wisdom. 
because Mars appears to be moving backwards from our perspective here on Earth. It enters at the sixth line <coughs> of uh, <coughs> excuse me, self-fulfillment and undiminished uh, resource. Uh, exalted uh, a valued uh, uh, the valued center that as it gives it, it receives. Uh, thus it, it can continue to give. Um, a, a depth and potential talent that is of value to others. Detrimented, it's a tendency to uh, superficiality that through generous, uh, that though generous and nurturing will, uh, will lack the uh, inspirational quality that can transform its gift into a uh, common currency. Uh, where depth is limited to taste, uh, w will uh, be superficial and affect the quality of possible talent. Um, on the 19th, uh, the sun then moves into the fourth line. So now again, we're moving into uh, the line of the uh, of the opportunist. We're still in the third hexagram. This occurs at 3:57 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, the uh, three uh, third hexagram fourth line is described as charisma, the uh, innate quality which attracts uh, valued guidance. Exalted, um, it's physic uh, physic uh, attunement to uh, that magna uh, magnetizes uh, nurturing, the, a psychic uh, energy which attracts nourishment and ensures ordering. Uh, detrimented, uh, uh, where demands of the ego lead to rejection, uh, confused energy that needs nurturing, uh, nourishment, uh, but is generally rejected. And, you know, and again, fourth line days, uh, we're changing from the inward perspective to the outward perspective. Again, themes of friendship, companionship, networking. Uh, the fourth line day is great for, uh, social interactions. Uh, so people are more open to networking, being friendly, being social. And, uh, you know, so um, uh, both the Sunday and the Saturday of that week would be good for your party if you're looking to, to get together with friends and, and have a social uh, 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 a social experience. Um, so this week we're continuing moving through the hexagrams, the 42, the 3, the 27, the 24. These are all gates associated with the, with the Janus God's head, and we're going to and we're, as we're continuing through the quarter of initiation. So we're exploring the qualities of the mind as they relate to the form, how the personality relates to the design, uh, be, what it's like to be a mind in a body. Uh, during the quarter of initiation, we we've, we've covered Kali, Mitra, uh, Michael, and so Janus is the final God's head of of initiation. Uh, and, and it's preparing us for the quarter of civilization. Uh, Janus was an ancient Roman god of beginnings and transitions, including things like doors, gates, passages, time, and endings. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, we, we, we looked at the 42nd hexagram being increase in growth, which I always, I thought about this as being like, you know, when I thought about these, these four hexagrams, it, it made me think of, uh, of, 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 of the birth process, you know, where the 42nd is increase in growth made me think of pregnancy. Uh, when the third difficulty at the beginning made me think of the actual birth event, uh, um, and, and followed by the 27th nourishment of the child. And then finally we get to the, the 24th hexagram, which is returning. The cycle begins anew. And I discussed Janice in detail last week. So you might want to review that video if you want more information about the final God's head of the quarter of initiation. So no matter what these energies are conditioning you during the week, remember this, ex uh, this experience is about being a passenger riding in a vehicle that's being driven by the magnetic monopole. So you can enjoy the scenery, let the vehicle just take you where you need to go. Every single day we have is a blessing. No matter what dramas beckon to distract us, we're all here just giving the performance of our lifetime on the world stage. Just take some time out to observe the play, observe the movie, as well as acting your part. Uh, you know, 
go through your life. Of course, you're going to be who you are and, 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 and act as, as you, as, uh, as the human that you are. But realize also that, uh, you know, a lot of what's going on when, when we have passenger consciousness, it's not as personal. Uh, it, it's, it, it, it's an event in your movie. And to me, when things are really crazy, uh, in my movie, uh, you know, things that are upsetting my character in the movie, uh, I, I sit there and go, wow, this is an interesting movie. It's not a boring movie. Uh, it's got suspense. It's got tension. It's got, you know, things that, that I, I actually look for in a movie. Uh, you know, the movie where if somebody gets all, everything they want, nobody's going to pay to see that movie. So anyway, the key thing with all this is just remember, you're a spiritual being that's having a human experience. You know, thank you for checking out New World Birth. The next segment of the weekly neutrino forecast will be on April 20th of uh, 2014. It should be available on the 19th, maybe before, when we're going to continue to look at the influence of the heavenly bodies as they transit the sky and the hexagrams, the I Ching. Um, you can check us out on Facebook. Uh, the text is available on the New World Birth blogger page. Uh, uh, and there's also a New World Birth YouTube along with the New World, World Birth Facebook page. I encourage you to share this information as videos or text as widely as you choose. I'll also be describing the transits of May 2014 and providing some short human design readings to the participants of the Earth Needs Rebels show on Truth Frequency Radio on Thursday, uh, May 1st. The show starts at uh, 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I come on the show about 1.30, uh, and the show goes till about 3. And uh, the great things about uh, Kevin and Katie at the Earth Needs Rebel show is uh, they, they're willing to call anybody anywhere on the planet for free to bring you on the show if you want to participate. Uh, and then, like I said, you can get yourself a, a short human design reading. Uh, uh, if you if you choose to, um, and uh, I invite you to contact me at newworldbirth at yahoo dot com if you have questions or you wish to schedule a reading. Um, so if you've been thinking about getting a reading, please feel free to contact me. I'd love to provide you a reading during these uncertain times. You'll need to either be able to call me in Maine in the USA, or we can connect with Skype to receive your reading. Uh, we're also accepting donations to try to keep these reports. Freely available, um, but getting a reading is the best way to make a donation, uh, and certainly uh, then you'll have something uh, uh, to, uh, that you get from it as well. Besides knowing that you've supported uh, our work here at, at, at New World Birth, as always, I'm blessed that you've taken the time out uh, to connect with my passion for all these ancient mysteries and their application to our journey during this incarnation. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste and Lakesh. And as Ra would say, love yourself. And uh, again, I'm, I'm just super grateful that you've taken the time uh, to, to, to view the video and uh, hope to connect with you either uh, in a reading or on the radio show or future videos or, you know, send me an email. But um, anyway, uh, you are a blessing in my life. And, uh, so I'm grateful. Thank you for everything. Peace, everybody.